Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, they claim that back in the day, the owner of the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis, when he was at the Combine, he wouldn't even time the runners. He would look at a guy run and he would be able to just tell off feel, how the guy moved, his economy of movement, how he ran. He could tell if the guy was fast or not. He could tell if the guy had football speed. Understand. The Raiders were always known for speed, right? Al Davis somehow figured out the speed without looking at a stopwatch. Now, there was a very important fight that took place last week, and it's very important, between Vassal Lomachenko and Gary Russell, right? Now, if you just look at the movement of the fighters, just ignore the punches for a second. If you just look at the movement of the fighters, it's clear that this is a fight between a great fighter, Vasyl Lomachenko, and a very good fighter, and Gary Russell. Now in the first round, Pauli Malignaggi makes the observation of the night. He actually points out that Gary Russell throws punches at the same speeds. Paulie then suggests that what Gary needs to do is he needs to switch up the speeds on his punches. Right? That's exactly right. Gary Russell is a guy who throws a great fastball. Right? He you know, just drawing an analogy to baseball, he can get the ball over the plate at more than 100 miles an hour. The problem is throwing a fastball is not pitching. Right? Gary is hardwired. You know the type. He looks stiff. He looks wooden compared to Vassal Lomachenko. Right? Gary is stiff. Vassal is jazz. He's switching up everything. His tempo is such that the guy can get off rhythm effortlessly. He hits Gary when Gary is not ready repeatedly in this fight. He's moving around the ring. Gary's hardwired. Vassal is limber. He's loose limbed and he's skilled. While Gary only knows one tempo, while Gary only has one pitch and it's speed, Vasyl Lomachenko is figuring out the tempo. He's what I call adaptive reactive. He's figuring out how Gary Russell moves. Then he's adjusting his game if he sees an opening mid-cadence he can take advantage of it. Now this is a fight between two southpaws. Right, their lefts are their dominant hands. Early in this fight, Lomachenko is interesting. He's on his back foot. He's moving around the ring. But yet when Gary Russell gets a little bit full of himself, Lomachenko hits him with his lead hand, his right hook. Right? He's two-handed. It all flows together. While he's moving around the ring, and while Gary is on rails, right? Gary doesn't have anything remotely resembling Lomachenko's lateral movement. Right? Lomachenko's moving side to side. He's reading Gary. I don't believe Gary's reading Vassal Lomachenko. I think Gary thinks differently. Gary's here. His hand speed typically overwhelms an opponent. 
So as Vassal moves around the ring, look at the start of the sixth round. It's really glaring. When Gary's on his front foot looking for Vassal, Vassal's the one determining where they are. He's moving. Gary, just like a robot, turns around and tries to come after him. Turns around, tries to come after him. Turns around, tries to come after him. Gary's not fluid. Gary can't move side to side. He can't adjust along with Lomachenko. And of course, as Gary moves, that creates openings for Lomachenko. Understand too, Gary is so caught up in his style, and his style is narrow, that everything for Gary is not only the same speed, it's always a combination. Always. Gary's not a guy who picks his spots and who pot shots. Right? He's not a guy who sees a left hand opening and then's able to lead with a power left hand and then back back out. In many ways, Gary is the opposite of Floyd Mayweather. Right? Understand. Compare and contrast the two guys. Both guys have great hand speed. But Floyd is reading an opponent, and you only notice the hand speed when it's necessary. Right? Floyd isn't always on his front foot. Right? Floyd can move laterally. You'll notice Floyd always seems to be off at the side. You don't have him in shootouts. Right? Gary... Because his speed has overpowered many an opponent, because it's exemplary, Gary's flaw. Right? He's the fastball pitcher who never learned the curve. Right? So Gary's in front of Vassal Lomachenko. He's trying to hunt down Lomachenko. He's hardwired. He's doing the same thing at the same speed round after round. So it reaches the point where Lomachenko, who is much more like Floyd Mayweather than Gary Russell, Lomachenko figures out the rhythm of the fight. So Lomachenko's moving around the ring. He knows simply moving around the ring is going to cause Gary to turn, is going to cause Gary to miss his punches. So Gary's throwing a lot of punches. He's not landing a lot of punches. What's interesting, too, it gets more interesting in the second round of this fight, when Lomachenko decides, and it's beautiful, it's the sport at the highest level. Lomachenko decides while he is moving that he is going to be the one backing up Gary Russell. So when you see it, you're going to see the right way to walk down an opponent. Right? Lomachenko comes forward, comes forward. Gary Russell throws a combination. Lomachenko effortlessly glides back or glides to the side. Effortlessly. Doesn't even get hit with more than one punch of the combination. Then Lomachenko continues to come forward. Eventually, Gary Russell is backing up. Gary's not the same fighter on his back foot than he is on his front foot. Lomachenko at times made Gary Russell look like just a fastball pitcher. Let me point out too that the elite fighters in the sport, Mayweather, right? The usual guys. Bernard Hopkins. James DeGale. Remember that name. Andre Ward, they'll look relaxed in the ring, right? None of those guys are hardwired, right? They don't look nervous in the ring. They look calm and loose-limbed. It actually allows them to do more, right? The bullets are flying. You want the guy who's not going to panic. You want the guy who isn't tense who's not in a rush, but who can operate quickly. 
right? A guy who is calm and can think about all of the possibilities while the battle is going on. What makes Lomachenko interesting is Lomachenko figures out he has a poker face. He figures out what Russell's doing. When he comes in, he has his defense up. Right? He's ducking under Russell's bombs. He's coming in. He's blocking Russell's bombs. Not a lot of clinching in the fight. What it is is lateral movement calmness. A guy with a fastball, a curveball, a slider, a changeup against a guy who only has a fastball. Let me tell you, it's interesting too. As the fight progresses, Lomachenko, I think it's maybe third or fourth round starts to unveil a stiff jab. It's stiff. It's good. Many guys with that level jab would lead with it. Here, Lomachenko's an elite fighter who seems to have the full toolbox. You just notice these brilliant tools that the guy has as he needs them. Right? It's as if he's there just figuring out Gary Russell. He's like looking at Gary Russell. He's seeing what Gary Russell's bringing to the table. And then he's just making the necessary adjustments. You know, he uh, moves early in rounds. Right? So Gary Russell's on his front foot. Then, round after round, Lomachenko would take over the round midway through the round. Right, so put me among those who don't believe that Gary Russell can beat Lomachenko, even in a rematch. Also, let me say, this is an elite fighter. Right, I, I don't care about the record or anything else. This is an elite fighter. He's one of the best in boxing. Right, you're talking about a guy who, quite frankly... You know, really, the young lead fighter who comes to mind with this guy's attitude and style, where the guy looks bored while he's doing high-level stuff, is James DeGale, the super middleweight from the UK. Right? Um, simply a brilliant performance. I don't know what else to say. If you haven't seen this fight, you need to see it. Gary Russell was a real opponent. Russell has some of the fastest hands in boxing. It takes an elite level fighter to not panic, to move around, and to handle him this way. Right? So, um, Lomachenko has me impressed. Let me say this. He starts with a right hook. It's his non-dominant hand early. Then later you notice he's slipping left hands to the body. We get the stiff jab. Right? It takes an elite fighter to look as patient. And that's how he looks. As patient as Lomachenko while throwing Lomachenko's volume. He's not a low volume fighter. Right? So understand if Lomachenko is doing this against a guy with some of the fastest hands in the sport, if he's making Gary Russell look like a one trick pony. What's he going to do when he faces opposition that doesn't have the ability to throw quick combinations like Gary Russell? Let me say, too, as you're judging fighters, right? we always talk about punches landed and things we can count. Let's talk about something we really can't count. Tempo. The ability to break tempo. Do the unexpected. Right? Miguel Vasquez, his jab, for example, always seems to be offbeat. That's why he lands. Look at Vasyl Lomachenko's ability to change tempo in the middle of the fight. To hit an opponent when that opponent is coming forward and doesn't expect it. To pivot quickly in the ring. That's high-level stuff. This is a high-level fighter. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us, gamblersadvisory.com. Keep in mind, too, both guys here were southpaws. Just imagine Lomachenko 
against a right-handed fighter who depends on a jab and who can't land it against the southpaw Lomachenko. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.